When I was a younger man, I worked at Butlins Holiday Camp in Bognor Regis. And every Thursday night, throughout the summer, Edwin Starr had a residency. And every Thursday night, I would go and I would watch Edwin, the great soul performer, the great singer, perform. What? Good God. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. The Swedish government has, within the last uh, 10 days, sent out this brochure to all households. It says on the front, what would, a, if war or serious crisis comes. It is a brochure to help the population of Sweden, of which I am one, to prepare to know what to do if a serious war or serious crisis occurs in our homeland. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take us through the brochure and do some constructive criticism. I've got a blown up version here in English so you can all follow along at home. It says at the top, important information for the population of Sweden. So clearly, this is aimed at the population of Sweden. Nobody else uh, matters in this, in this case. So this is for us that live in Sweden. Okay, and it says, if crisis or war comes. That's page one. Page two, list of contents, and it says, describes what it is. This brochure is being sent to all households in Sweden at the behest, the behest, blimey, that's a big word, isn't it? Of the Swedish government, the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency, MSB, is responsible for its content. The purpose, so this is important, the purpose of this brochure is to help us become better prepared from everything from serious accidents, extreme weather, and IT attacks to military conflicts. This isn't the first time the Swedish government has sent out a brochure like this. They send to, tend to do one every generation or every couple of generations. I think they've done two or three since the end of the, uh, the Second World War. And this one is for us who live in 2018. Let's see how they've changed it, what they're telling us to do, how they're telling us to be prepared. First uh, page is, what would you do if every day life was turned upside down? What happens if the heating stops working? Well, that's a big deal in the winter. If it becomes difficult to prepare and store food, basically gives you a bullet list there of you know, things to think about. Now, I think if you're watching this uh, channel, you might be already of the preparedness mind. You probably uh, are a bit of a prepper, or you're thinking about becoming a prepper, or you're prepper curious. Or maybe you even know someone's a prepper, or you're just here watching on the behalf of somebody who is a prepper. So for you guys and ladies, you're probably, you know, you've got plans, backup plans, but you've got to think about the 99.9% .9 of normal population, you know, not the uh, tinfoil, hat wearing wackos that we are, they got no idea. They're just wandering around in a total daze. You know, they go to work, they come home again, they think everything's gonna happen automatically for them. They're not prepared for anything. They're not like us, but they need to get this information. So this is the basic information for those people, the real wackos that aren't prepared. So what the first two pages are really telling you is basically slowly, gently warming up the general population to be aware of the fact that if the uh, shit hits the fan, there's not gonna be necessarily a reaction from the government immediately that's gonna be able to support you. It's warning you what you should prepare for, just saying, look guys, if the shit hits the fan, you may have to look after yourself for a period of time to make sure you're prepared. And also laying out a few basic scenarios. You know, if you live in a floodplain, you should be prepared for flooding. If you live near a chemical plant, you maybe should be prepared for the fact that a big chemical cloud might pop up and you'd have to close your windows. So it's basically telling you, you know, don't expect the government to come and do everything for you in an emergency situation. Make sure you've got the basics on hand and you've got some sort of plan. The next page is very interesting because this is probably the first time they printed this in one of these brochures and it says, be on the look lookout for false information. Of course, fake news, propaganda on Facebook, on all your social media, everybody knows that's an issue today. And they're making one whole page telling you, don't believe basically the bullshit that you're gonna read online or hear on the radio or see on TV in the time of emergency. It's telling you also not to share or create any conspiracy theories, create any rumors 
on social media. Very important. Now, unfortunately, we do live in a time when there's a very, there's a large percentage of the population that do not have any um, critique of the source of the information and they'll share any old garbage on the internet. This is my opinion. The younger generation, I mean, I'm in my mid 40s, so I'm definitely not the younger generation. I'm talking, you know, the millennials actually, and they get a real bad rap. But my experience with millennials is they actually have got much, they're much more sophisticated about how they understand and can analyze information that they get online. And it's actually, I would say, the, uh, okay, might hurt a few people's feelings here, but the baby boomer generation, the, uh, the generation above me, my parents' generation, they share any old crap that they see on Facebook without any, not everybody of course, but a large amount of them. They just, they see something that says, share this, and they just share any old garbage. And they do it without thinking about it. And they're really, really being irresponsible. That older generation, that baby boomer generation, there's a certain elements in that that has got, hasn't got the brains they were fucking born with. The next piece of information is a list of advice to do in the event of a terror attack. Um, I'll go through the bullet points, we'll take it point by point. Move to a safe place and avoid large groups of people. I think that's uh, very good advice. I think most people would understand that. Call the police on 112, our emergency number, and inform them if you see something important. Yeah, import, good advice. Warn those who are in danger and help those who are in need of assistance. Okay, basic common sense. This is a very good one, or very interesting. Put your mobile on silent and do not call anyone who may be in the danger area. I think there have been uh, cases where people's phones, they've been hiding in places when there's been gunmen going around, active shooters, and their phones have gone off and they've been found for that, for that reason. So if you've got someone, a loved one, a friend, and you think they're in the actual, the core, the center of the danger zone, do not ring them. That's probably difficult to, to, not to do if you're really worried about someone. Your, your um, natural inclination will be to call them. But you know, if they're safe, they're gonna be safe. Uh, you'll get in touch with them later. If they're in the danger area, you know, ringing them is not gonna help them out because having a conversation is not gonna get them out of that danger area. So just hold back on that. And of course, if you're in a danger area, put your phone on silent, very good. Do not call anyone with your mobile unless you have to. This is because of overload of the networks. Um, uh, you know, the phones, basically get overloaded, everybody makes a phone call and so not even the emergency services or the people that really, really need to make a call can't. So just hold off using your communication devices. Uh, comply with requests from the police, the fire and the rescue service and the authorities. Basically, yeah, if the copper tells you to move, move. I mean, common sense. Uh, but then again, I would say, do not do that blindly because of course there have been uh, documented cases where the police have basically shuffled civilians, innocents into the the path of um, terrorists unwittingly obviously they didn't do it on purpose but if a policeman tells you go that direction and your better instinct is no I'm not going to go in that direction because I think there's danger down there you've always got to follow your own brain make your own decisions because at the end of the day it's you it's going to be uh, six feet under if it goes wrong uh, do not share unconfirmed information or online or in any other way again do not share rumors and if you're sharing rumours, you're going to be overloading the communications network anyway. So that's another good reason not to do it. The next couple of pages is a, a large description about Sweden's defences. And it's basically telling you uh, that basically Sweden is into uh, total defence. That means in the time of war, the entire population would be expected to contribute to the defence of Sweden. And uh, of course... If we're, we're all in it together, we've got to all got to defend ourselves, we pull together and we never give up. I'll just skip a couple of pages now and we'll go to this page here. If Sweden is attacked, resistance is required. They're part of the resistance fighting the Death Star. Uh, bullet points, what could happen? Cyber attacks to knock out important IT, IT systems. I mean, as I understand it, uh, all uh, sovereign nations are under IT attacks all the time. It's just we don't hear about it. Sabotage of infrastructure, of course. Terror attacks that affect a large number of people. Attempts, okay, so this is now we're getting into like things that are relevant to us, maybe not in the past, but attempts to influence Sweden's decision makers or inhabitants. Basically propaganda from external sovereign nations or external interest groups who are trying to influence us and they're gonna be doing this on the internet. Uh, 
severed transport links, bridges down, railways down. Military attacks, you know, your standard traditional uh, military attack, either conventional or nuclear. And then in red down here, very important, it says, if Sweden is attacked by another country, we will never give up all information to the effect that resistance is to cease is false. So, anyone listening out there, considering attacking Sweden, remember this, we will never give up. We will never cease resistance. We will have total defense and total attack on you if you attack us. We never give up. Next, what is included is a, a prepping sheet. It's a checklist of everything, or not everything, it's a checklist of basic requirements that you should have in your house. And it's set up into different sections. So it's got one section on food, tells you what sort of food you should have there. And it's, you know, it gives you little boxes that you can tick off. So you can use this as a little cheat sheet at home for your own preparedness. It explains to you what sort of food you should keep, what sort of uh, you should do for water, like storage of water. Also the ability to uh, purify water, warmth. Obviously Sweden being a, a very northerly country, Warmth is very important in the winter months. A uh, little bit others, uh, ways of cooking if the electricity gas goes off. Communications, you know, wind up radio, stuff like that. And all other things like cash and small denominations, make sure you've got extra medicine that you need and so on and so forth. Your basic cleanliness needs to make sure that you do not get uh, disease and so on being spread around. So that's actually quite useful for the, the GP, the general population that are all into preparedness. This is giving you your basic preppers list. Then at the back of the brochure, the back they've got some information about the different warning signals. When you hear sirens, Sweden does have a network of uh, public sirens and they test them every month. And they're giving you an exp explanation here what the different siren sounds mean. So they've got one for if there's gonna be an important public announcement, that's a seven, sig seven second signal with a break for 14 seconds. Uh, danger over is an unbroken 30 second signal. Then you've got and the emergency alarm is uh, 30 seconds with a 15 break in between. So 30 seconds, 15, no, no, no alarm. 30 second alarm, 15, no alarm. Air aid warning is a signal with short bursts for one minute. Danger over again is 30 seconds. Gives you some explanation about who can access the uh, public uh, shelters, air raid shelters. And that is basically wherever you are, you go to the nearest air raid shelter. There's no uh, priority everybody can get access. Along with the publication of this uh, brochure, like I said, this isn't like the first time it's been done. So I don't think we should read so much into this, but uh, the Swedish government, we have actually reintroduced, I think it's 2019, the reintroduction of uh, general conscription or general national service, where we've had a, an eight year gap, I think. So nearly a whole generation has uh, skipped over it. Uh, they try to introduce a purely voluntary um, military service, defence service, but uh, apparently what's happened is they've not got the requisite number of uh, troops or manpower, woman power, this is Sweden of course, completely uh, equal here, women, men, we all serve. Uh, so they reintroduced the national service and I think that's in 2019 or 2020 that's coming back. So we're gonna get back up to full strength with a very, very strong military. Uh, Sweden has got a fantastic military, we've got fantastic personnel that serve, and what also Sweden has got is a fantastic um, cooperation amongst the people, social co social co cohesion. We're uh, a country where everybody looks out for each other, and in terms of emergency, in times of emergency, we, we look out for each other, we defend ourselves, we'll always resist and we'll never give up. Uh, I'm very confident that Sweden is gonna be uh, in this situation for many, many centuries thousands of years to come. It's the greatest country in the world and it's gonna remain so. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you're prepared. If you're not prepared yet, get prepared. It's never too late to start. If you're a subscriber, thanks for being a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber and you've enjoyed this video, become a subscriber because I come out with regular videos. And then I'll see you next time. Take it easy.